So I have these weird outlets, and they've got Ethernet jacks in them, but these Ethernet ports don't really go anywhere. I contacted the last owner of the house, and they didn't know, so I did a little search, and I found something myself. But what I found was that they threw all the cables right here in this box. So they're not terminated, they're just kind of sitting there. So I've got this, this is a toner, and this is going to help me find out where the cables are. So I've got the other end of this plugged into that ethernet jack inside, and this is going to go off whenever it sees a signal. Turn it off, unplug it, and then plug it into my room, and then turn it back on. Okay, here I go. I'm going in your room. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this one. Well, that's interesting. So they actually had my living room Ethernet jack connected to my phone line. So I wouldn't have been able to make a, a phone call if I had to. And that's something. So that's probably what this one was. It's supposed to be at any rate. If they had it connected, they decided, nope, that one wasn't it. So they connected this one instead. that I have to bring inside. Alright, so I need to find the distance uh, between here and the end of the wall because I need to be able to transfer that distance on the inside of the garage. So I've got this uh, range finder and it's just got a little laser on it. I'm going to use that. I'm going to point it at this box which I have just at the end of the, uh, the wall. So it's at about 11.5 feet. Uh, from the front of the box, and we're going to check the back of the box. And that's about 12.86. So 11.47 right here. So it's the box is right about here. So where I want to put it is going to be right here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that there is nothing, at least that I'm in the correct spot. Okay, so the stud is exactly right here. So I pretty much nailed that. There doesn't appear to be anything standing out, and I don't see any wires on the side. So that's good. It looks fairly safe. So there's a couple ways to do this. Because I have a stud right here, I could try to use just a, a single gang box. Because this is low voltage, I'm going to use a low voltage work box. I want to cut it out just a little wide. Okay, so now let's see if we can reach those cables. Not a good sign. So, uh, for my next video, I'm going to be showing how to patch drywall. So what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to send this leader down the wall and drag it. Okay. I'm not sure if it's going to be long enough to make it all the way up, so I'm going to tie some fishing line. So that made it all the way up, and I got about uh, two or three feet. I help her. You are strong.
now I've got this cable tester and I've already get, got it uh, plugged in upstairs. I'm just going to see how I did. Okay, so three and six. I'm going to try another one before I go up there. See if my luck stays the same. I'm going to do this one standard type B. Fail. Oh, okay. So this one is type A. All right. Type A. So the X's then means that the orange and orange white on the other wire are broken. Pass! Sweet. Okay. <laughs> There's one. And I will click that end of the bottom. Hoping that it's just the keystone. So I'm just going to score it before I do anything fancy. So this is the keystone. And I'm going to just pop it out. You can see this one's labeled, so if you're using type A on the top, just follow those colors. Type B on the bottom, use those colors. So I'm going to be using type A, so that's brown, white, brown, orange, white, orange, and then on this side, green, white, green, blue, white, blue. You can see how wrecked this thing is. Somebody hacked into that thing. They were probably cutting a hole for this drywall and just sliced through it. I don't see any damage on the Ethernet though, so... I got lucky with that one. This guy took all the damage. Fortunately, I don't need it for this room. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot to work with right here. I'm about to make even less. Take one of these caps, and that seats it where it needs to be, so these wires can't pull out. And I tested it, and I wasn't recording, but it works now. It's uh, it's, it's still bad because I have it as a messed up Type B, and I, I made it a Type A, just like the other room was. So it's messed up, but at least it's not showing X's. Before it was showing X's, now it's just showing that the uh, the numbers are mismatched. So at least it sees all the pairs now. So I'm going to do one final cut. I'm going to make this a type A. That's a relief because that's one room where it has to work. Pass. Awesome. Okay. So the important room is wired. The only reason I'm plugging these in right now is so they don't fall into the hole. There we go. Short. Three and four. Short three and four, so I'm probably gonna have to go look at the keystone on East Bedroom. Cool. All right, master bedroom is good. Let's go check what's going on with that east bedroom. So we place the keystone. Let's test this guy again. Pass. Awesome. tape this fishing string to this wire. So 
I've always got a string that's going all the way from the bottom to the top in case I need to try to pull something up again in the future. So now for what we're going to be putting here. So this is a switch. And most consumer grade switches are nice except for one problem which is that they don't resist heat very well. They usually cut out at about 104 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm putting this in my garage so it's possible it could get much hotter than that. And if my internet cuts out because my garage is too hot, I'm going to be upset. This is an industrial switch. It's by WeWave. It's intended for enclosures and enclosures can get very warm. So this is intended to still work even in very hot conditions. The catch is it uh, doesn't come with a power supply. This is what it has. It has this plug that is to supply power from within the cabinet. I'm going to be using just a, a basic power supply. This one is from an LED driver and this WeWave switch can accept a handful of different voltages except anywhere between 12 and 48 volts and this is 12 volts and 5 amps so that should be plenty for this. I'm going to Fairly safely assume that the red on here is positive and tighten it down. Okay, so now I'm going to supply power and we'll see if it smokes. I'm going to I'll just start with the important one, my room. Got one of them going. So this is where the router is. So this is where the internet's coming from. And then I've got a computer in this room. I think it's on. All right. And in the studio. Cool. We have wired internet. Let's go and see how well it works. Okay, so this is how I typically use this computer. I'm gonna take these files here just some videos. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it to my networked drive up in the office. This is going to be, of course, limited to the speed of the hard drives, but also keep in mind that the speed with the Wi-Fi was about five megabytes per second, so it was extremely excruciatingly slow. So let's see what we get now. About 100. Okay, so that's about what I expect, a little over 100 now. Okay, cool. So do three gigabytes in about what is that 25 30 seconds so it's not blazingly fast uh i mean of course the internet is going to run a lot faster because i'm not going to have to worry about writing to a hard drive but this is as fast as i expected so not too bad